Over the last few weeks, I've done a few videos about Algorand and Solana. I never realized, though, just how similar both cryptocurrency projects are. And this made me wonder which of the two is better. Today, I intend to find out by comparing Solana and Algorand using a series of metrics, including their founders, their architectures, their features, their tokenomics, and their price potential. Not one more step. If you don't heed my words, you will get wrecked. If you're looking for financial help, you'll have to find it somewhere else. Everything in this video is just entertainment and education combined with a lot of speculation. You should also know that I hold Sol as part of my cryptocurrency portfolio. Even so, I promise to be objective when I compare it to Algo. If this is your first visit, my name is Guy, and I think crypto is the shit. My mission is to create high-quality content to help you learn it. Coins, tokens, news, reviews, exchanges, tutorials, DeFi regulations, and taxes too. If this sounds good to you, subscribing to the channel and pinging that notification bell is the smart thing to do. To optimize your viewing experience, I've left a few timestamps below that you can use as your sixth sense. You can use them to skip around or watch until the end if you want to help this video get found. Now raise your voice and raise your hands because it's time for Solana versus Algorand. Algorand was founded in 2017 by Silvio Micali. Silvio is a lifelong MIT professor who has won various awards for his work in cryptography, specifically zero knowledge proofs. Solana was founded in 2017 by Anatoly Yakovenko. Anatoly worked at Qualcomm for nearly 13 years, developing the next generation technology in the phones that some of you are using to watch this video. Silvio was inspired to create Algorand after hearing about the blockchain trilemma of scalability, security, and decentralization, which was proposed by Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin. Algorand is Silvio's solution. Anatoly was inspired to create Solana after a, quote, caffeine-induced fever dream, where he realized that Bitcoin scalability could be increased without compromising on security and decentralization. Solana is Anatoly's solution. Algorand was created by American software company Algorand Inc., and its development is coordinated by the Algorand Foundation, a nonprofit based in Singapore. Solana was created by American software company Solana Labs, and its development is coordinated by the Solana Foundation, a nonprofit based in Switzerland. Algorand has raised over half a billion dollars since 2018 and is backed primarily by public institutions. Solana has also raised over half a billion dollars since 2018 and is backed primarily by private institutions. Algorand's mainnet went live in late 2019 and is still technically in development. Solana's mainnet went live in early 2020 and is also still technically in development. So far, so good. So let's take a look under the hood. Algorand uses a novel proof-of-stake consensus mechanism called pure proof-of-stake. In pure proof-of-stake, a stake-based lottery is used to select a participant node to produce a block. Any wallet can act as a participant node, and there are around 1,200 participant nodes right now. Although only participant nodes participate in consensus, the Algorand blockchain itself is operated by about 100 relay nodes, all of which are currently run by the Algorand Foundation, Algorand Inc., Algorand's early investors, and the many universities the project has partnered with. This centralized setup allows Algorand to process around 1,100 transactions per second with near instant finality. Now, as I mentioned in my recent Algorand update, Algorand's TPS will soon be over 46,000. This could create some serious decentralization issues down the line as a smaller and smaller number of relay nodes would be able to store Algorand's entire transaction history. Silvio believes this issue could be solved using zero-knowledge proofs to compress Algorand's transaction history. Last but not least, Algorand's blockchain has never gone down since its main net went live, and it's one of the few cryptocurrencies which has achieved this feat. Solana, meanwhile, uses a novel proof-of-stake consensus mechanism called proof-of-history. Now, proof of history technically isn't a consensus mechanism, but let's pretend it like it is for simplicity's sake. 
In proof of history, blocks are timestamped by a validator node which is selected based on its stake. Anyone can become a validator node, and there are currently around 1,000 validators on Solana. Although the Solana blockchain is secured by all validator nodes, transactions are divided among a smaller group of up to 150 validators called Solana clusters. This somewhat centralized setup allows Solana to process between 45 and 50,000 transactions per second with near instant finality, and Solana's theoretical maximum TPS is around 65,000. Solana's speed means it is subject to the same transaction history storage issues that Algorand will face in the future. Solana's solution is to use Arweave to store this information. And you can find more on Arweave in the description. In contrast to Algorand, Solana's blockchain has gone down twice since its mainnet went live. OK, great. Now let's look at how they stake. There is no minimum stake to become a participant node on Algorand, and staking can be easily done using the official Algorand Wallet mobile app. Algo staking rewards are currently around 5% per year, and there is no lockup period for staked Algo. Participant nodes on Algorand also won't see their stakes slashed if they try to manipulate the network. So as a result of these conditions, around 52% of Algo's total supply is currently being staked. What's odd is that Algo's state supply is larger than its circulating supply. And more on that in a moment. There is no minimum stake to become a validator node on Solana. That said, the hardware and technical know-how required to set up a Solana validator is quite extensive. Luckily, delegation is also possible, and it can be easily done using Solana's Phantom Browser extension wallet. If you want to know how to set up the Phantom Wallet, you can check out my recent Solana tutorial video using the link in the top right. Anyways, Sol staking rewards are currently around 7% per year, and there is a five-day lockup period for staked Sol. Validators who try to manipulate the network will be slashed, including their delegated stake. Solana will eventually introduce a 100% slashing penalty for misbehaving validators. Now, as a result of these conditions, around 77% of Sol's total supply is currently being staked. What's odd is that Sol's stake supply is likewise larger than its circulating supply. So this brings me to the tokenomics of Algo and Sol. Algo is Algorand's native coin. It's used for staking, to pay for transaction fees, and as of October the 1st, Algo is also used for governance, though the extent of this governance is somewhat limited for now. Algo has a maximum supply of 10 billion. Two and a half billion Algo were allocated to Algorand Inc. and the Algorand Foundation. Algorand Inc. seems to sell its Algo as needed. The Algorand Foundation automatically sells its Algo at regular intervals as per the structured selling scheme and occasionally gives Algos to Algorand Inc. As per Algo's new tokenomics, the remaining 7.5 billion Algos will be allocated to Algorand's ecosystem over the course of 10 years. Between 4 and 5 billion of these ecosystem Algos have been distributed already, and most of them have gone to Algorand's early backers who are running Algorand's relay nodes. Algorand's relay node runners were allocated over 3 billion Algo, and in September 2019, Algorand's relay node runners agreed to delay their Algo rewards in exchange for more Algo and accelerated vesting. This is where relay node runners will be issued some Algos whenever the average price of Algo, over a 30-day period, rises relative to the previous 30-day period. The Algorand Foundation has estimated that accelerated vesting will continue until 2023, though many in the Algorand community believe this will happen much sooner under favorable market conditions. Because Algo's staked supply is larger than its circulating supply, this suggests that Algorand Inc., the Algorand Foundation, and potentially even Algorand's relay node runners have been earning staking rewards on their locked Algos, meaning their actual Algo allocations are much larger. Finally, only 25 million Algo were sold in a public sale to retail investors in 2019, and almost all these Algos were bought back by the Algorand Foundation in 2019 and 2020 after the price collapsed. And now for Sol. 
Sol is Solana's native coin. It's used for staking, to pay for transaction fees, and though multiple on-chain governance structures for Solana have been proposed, none have materialized yet. Sol has no maximum supply. Its annual inflation rate begins at 8% and will decline to just 1.5% after 15 years. 50% of the Sol used to pay for transaction fees is also burned, which could eventually make Sol deflationary. Sol's initial supply was 500 million, with 25% allocated to Solana Labs and the Solana Foundation, 38% reserved for a community treasury custodied by the Solana Foundation, 35% being sold to private investors and less than 2% being sold to retail investors. As I mentioned in my first video about Solana, only 15% of Sol's initial supply was circulating at the time. Sol's circulating supply increased by more than 80% on January the 7th this year, meaning basically all the tokens allocated to the parties I just mentioned were unlocked. This is why it's so strange that Solana's blockchain explorer suggests Sol's circulating supply is just 60% of its total supply, when it should really be closer to 95%. According to a post on the Solana subreddit, this inconsistency is due to the fact that the Sol allocated to the Solana Foundation are not counted as part of Sol's circulating supply for whatever reason. Assuming this is the case, it looks like the Solana Foundation is staking that Sol and earning rewards, since over 72% of Sol's supply is being staked, despite only 60% of it being officially in circulation. As such, this suggests their actual Sol allocations are more than what I just mentioned. Now, this is just one of the many things to be on the lookout for when analyzing a cryptocurrency's on-chain data. And you can learn more about on-chain analysis by following that link in the top right. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the price analysis and price potential of ALGO and SOL. ALGO's historical price isn't pretty. This is in part due to the fact that ALGO began trading in the middle of the previous bull market, but primarily because of the accelerated vesting and structured selling schemes I explained earlier. The constant increase in ALGO supply has historically suppressed its price, though this does seem to be slowly changing. ALGO recently pushed past its ICO price of $2.40, and though it was quickly pushed down as investors took profits, I believe that ALGO could reach new all-time highs in the coming weeks. Although ALGO's price tag is not very large, its market cap is, and this means it has limited upside potential. Still, there's quite a gap between where ALGO is and where it should be based on its fundamentals. ALGO could easily become a top 10 cryptocurrency by market cap, especially once all the selling from its accelerated vesting is over. This would correspond to about a 3x to 4x increase in price, which is a realistic long-term explanation. And just to clarify, by long-term, I mean one to two years. Sol's price history tells a very different story. Sol has grown exponentially ever since it started trading, which is surprising given Sol's insanely aggressive vesting schedule. Sol's price should have collapsed when 95% of its allocated supply was unlocked on January the 7th, but this didn't happen. Now, I'm not entirely sure why, but it's likely a combination of the long-term vision of Solana's investors and some sort of coordination between them to make sure their selling doesn't crash the price of Sol. In terms of short-term price action, Sol has held up quite well in response to recent crypto market crashes and is only a short distance away from an all-time high it recently set. Because Sol's market cap is already very large, it has much less wiggle room than Algorand in terms of price gains. If Sol reaches $220 in the coming weeks, this will correspond to a whopping 1,000x return for Sol's ICO investors. A realistic long-term price target for Sol at this point in time would be around $300, which is slightly less than a 2x move from its current price. Again, how high Sol and ALGO could go ultimately depends on what the rest of the crypto market does in the next year or two. When the tops for ALGO and Sol do come around, you can use my video about how to spot the top to help maximize your profits. And you can find that up in the usual spot. Yep, top right. This leaves one last metric, and that's adoption. 
Starting with retail adoption, the Algorand Wallet app has over 100,000 downloads on the Google Play Store. Now, while the number of downloads isn't shown on the Apple App Store, I reckon it's safe to assume a similar figure. This means that Algorand has around 250,000 users. Solana's Phantom Browser Extension Wallet has over 500,000 downloads on the Chrome Web Store. And this means that Solana has at least 500,000 users. Note that this discrepancy is to be expected, because Algorand has yet to roll out any dApps, whereas Solana already has dozens. Solana's DeFi protocols also have billions of dollars in total value locked, too. Now, as for institutional adoption, Algorand has been dominating the public sector. There are many examples I can point to, but here are a few highlights. Algorand has partnered with the SIAE, Italy's largest copyright agency, to store its 4 million copyrights on the Algorand blockchain. Algorand has partnered with the government of El Salvador via Coibanks to build the Salvadoran government's blockchain infrastructure. Algorand is also partnered with the Republic of the Marshall Islands to mint its own digital currency called the Marshallese Sovereign. On that note, Algorand has positioned itself to be the ideal blockchain for central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, and some sources suggest the United States will build its CBDC on Algorand. On the private sector side, Algorand partnered with the company behind the Exodus cryptocurrency wallet to issue their tokenized shares on the Algorand blockchain. In contrast to Algorand, most of Solana's institutional adoption has taken place in the private sector, especially within the cryptocurrency space. There are, again, many examples I can point to, but the most significant is Solana's partnership with the FTX cryptocurrency exchange. FTX is on track to become the most popular centralized exchange, and this is in large part due to its massive marketing campaigns and commitment to compliance. FTX is hosting its own ecosystem of decentralized applications on Solana. And even though FTX has its own FTT token, Solana seems to have taken the role of FTX's own native blockchain. FTX's CEO, Sam Bankman-Fried, is also the CEO of Alameda Research, the largest liquidity provider in cryptocurrency. Alameda Research has been investing hundreds of millions of dollars into cryptocurrency projects, all of which have been built on Solana or become a part of Solana's ecosystem. No coincidences here. Now, while Solana doesn't have much to show on the public sector side, it does seem to have a very close relationship with USDC issuer Circle, likely via FTX and Alameda. Not only that, but the Center Consortium, which governs USDC, noted Solana as the, quote, official chain for USDC earlier this year. This is significant because it's possible, if not likely, that Circle will be involved in the creation of USD CBDC. If this turns out to be the case, Solana will be on the list of blockchains for consideration. Now, I must admit that this claim borders on speculation. And if you want to know why I believe Circle will be involved with the creation of a USD CBDC, check out the link up there. All right, gloves down, let's take it from the top. Starting with the founders, Silvio and Anatoly are the same but different. Silvio has very specialized knowledge with a focus on theory. He also has a lot of connections to very powerful people in public office due to his time at MIT. One powerful person that comes to mind here is SEC Chairman Gary Gensler, who taught cryptocurrency at MIT. Silvio's credentials give Algorand additional legitimacy, but it also makes him a sort of outlier as he's not really cryptocurrency, if you know what I mean. Conversely, Anatoly has very specialized knowledge with a focus on practice, and he seems to be much more involved in Solana's development. Anatoly also has a lot of connections in cryptocurrency. I've lost count of the interviews with other founders I've watched that say they've worked with Anatoly or someone on the Solana team. One project that comes to mind here is Helium, and I'll leave a link to a video about the project in the description if you've never heard of it. Most importantly, Anatoly's connections have made Solana very open to interoperability. And because interoperability is the future of cryptocurrency, this is actually a really big deal. Next, we have Algorand and Solana's architectures. Obviously, Algorand's TPS has not yet been improved, and it's still very much in the process 
of opening up its relay node operations to third parties. Once that's done, though, the two projects will be similar. Algorand and Solana will both be fast and somewhat centralized. The biggest discrepancy will be in the security department. It's clear that Algorand is more secure than Solana, at least for the time being. As far as I can tell, Solana's security issues have come from its 400 millisecond block time. And if I'm correct, this means Algorand could run into similar issues in the future, as it's also looking to speed up its block time to 500 milliseconds. When it comes to staking, Solana takes the cake. This is simply because staking Sol is much easier to do, and the five days lockup is well worth the additional 2% per year. Slashing on Solana is extremely rare, so there's really nothing to worry about there, especially if you do your research on your validator. In terms of tokenomics, Solana seems to win here as well, but only because the team and investors haven't dumped. This could happen at any time, since their Sol coins are no longer locked. Even so, Sol's partial fee burns will almost certainly make Sol deflationary in the future. Less supply with the same or more demand means its price will go up. As for Algorand, I honestly don't think its structured selling or accelerated vesting will end anytime soon. Algo's maximum supply is certainly a big bonus, but it doesn't mean much when the effective inflation rate from all the new supply is much higher than Sol's and will be for a while. This ties into the price potential of both cryptocurrencies. Although Solana's upside potential in the short term is limited by its massive market cap, I would argue that Sol's upside is more guaranteed than Algo's for tokenomic reasons. Algo's long-term potential is also questionable because it assumes that the Algorand Foundation will deliver on all its promises. Now, there's no reason to think that it won't, but I personally prefer investing in a cryptocurrency I can use today rather than waiting for one that will be usable at a later date. I'm referring to dApps, by the way. Now, you could argue that Algorand has the upper hand because of its incredible institutional adoption. The only issue there is that there is no guarantee that any of Algorand's public sector partnerships will have any effect on the price of Algo. As we've seen with other crypto projects, the companies behind them will usually just build a permissioned clone of their cryptocurrency. This means there's no actual demand for the publicly traded cryptocurrency coin. Solana's institutional adoption, on the other hand, has had an effect on Sol beyond speculation, mainly because most of its partnerships ultimately involve regular folks like you and me. All of the dApps and projects being built on Solana because of FTX and Alameda Research create demand for Sol at both the individual and institutional level, and that means its price will go up. The proof is in the charts. So, in conclusion then, Solana wins. But there's a caveat here. If Algorand can deliver on its promises and address the issues it knows it has, Algorand could beat Solana in a few years' time. Don't count on it, though. And there you have it, folks. Solana versus Algorand. If I did it justice, roundhouse kick that like button. Remember to subscribe to the channel and slam that notification bell, too. It'll make sure that my next video finds you. And while you wait, you can check out Coin Bureau Clips. It's my second channel, and it's pretty great. You can also follow me on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, and even join my Telegram. My weekly newsletter is my pride and joy, though. It's got all the tools, tips, and tricks you need to optimize your cryptocurrency portfolio. If you want to support the channel, you can do just that by getting yourself a sweater, hoodie, or tee at the Coin Bureau merch store. My socials and other goodies can be found in the description. Thank you so much if you watched until the end. Until we meet again, stay crypto, my friends.